Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, Bible study will begin. It's hard to believe. It'll be September 13th already, and uh, Bible study begin tomorrow evening. If you haven't gotten your book yet, um, there are some in the church office back there. Um, Kyler, is it unlocked already, the church yes. office? Yes, I did. Okay, it is unlocked. So there's some back there in the church office. If you want to get one and just pay for it tomorrow night, that's fine. And uh, uh, So Bible study tomorrow evening at 7. Uh, we'll probably meet uh, in here in the sanctuary. So, uh, and probably not good. I hate to say this, but probably not good to bring food yet. Yeah. Well, Sandra, I need food. Okay, but anyway, my wife doesn't feed me. So, anyway, all right, now I'm getting some backlash. Okay. New members class starts next Sunday. Um, anyway, Nina, yeah, that's enough. Anyway, okay. But um, uh, new members class after church, it'll be to Christ Church the first time, then Honor Bind Church. There are three different meetings for new members, and it'll only, it'll only be our meetings. Um, so that's next Sunday, and then confirmation class begins again September 26th. It's the same confirmation class that was meeting back in, what was it, January, February of 2020 before this mess began. So uh, um, I, I saw when I came past the Church of God this morning, and they're meeting online. Did you see that? Oh, that's because they're having uh, church over to camp this week. Oh, good, good. It's not announced. Okay, yeah. good, good, good. All right, so um, so confirmation class begins Sunday the 26th. Uh, we do have, uh, Karen reminded me that um, this weekend leadership meeting this Tuesday night, all right? Um, this Tuesday at 6.30 here at Otterbein leadership meeting. So, all right. Um, I think that's all the announcements. Karen, do you have any more? No? Okay. All right. Anybody else? Any announcements? All right. Let us begin with the prayer of the
please remain standing for the invitation to God. join in singing how great thou art.
Our Old Testament reading comes from Proverbs 1, 20 to 33. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the square, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O simple ones, will you love being simple? How will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my proof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded. And because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you. When panic strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will speak me diligently, they will seek me diligently, but will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For weariness kills, waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will, at, will be at ease without dread or disaster. The New Testament reading comes from James 3, 1 to 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue of a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In our scripture reading today, in Proverbs, we're listening to a speech from Lady Wisdom. And Lady Wisdom says, we have not been listening in Proverbs. Therefore, in verse 24, it says, since you refuse to listen when I call and no one pays attention when I stretch out my hand, 
Since you disregard all my advice and do not accept my rebuke, I in turn will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. When calamity overtakes you like a storm. When disaster sweeps over you like a whirlwind. When distress and trouble overwhelm you, they will call to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me, but will not find me. When 9-11 occurred, many people said at that time that it was a reminder that we had turned away from God. For three to six months afterward, churches were full with congregants. I remember I was uh, still teaching in the classroom at that point, and I was youth director at that time at Memorial Lutheran Church in Shippensburg. And church attendance right after 9-11 was, they were, we were packed. Even at the Lutheran Church, which is hardly ever packed. Attendance was at near record numbers. And then it fell off again and did not come back. And then came COVID in March of 2020, and attendance really fell. Most mainline denominations went to online worship for a number of months, and then they returned in the spring of 2021. However, most churches still see attendance off by 20 to 30 percent. And I am not quite sure, I don't have a crystal ball, I am not quite sure what it will take to get people back. I just hope it doesn't take another catastrophic wake-up call like September 11th. As Steve Green sang, people do need the Lord. And as Proverbs is reminding us this morning, we do need to repent and hear what the Lord, or in this case in Proverbs, Lady Wisdom is telling us. And then in James 3, we are warned by the writer, first off, that not all of us should become teachers because the behavior of teachers is judged more strictly. And then he goes into, James goes into talking about the tongue. Controlling the horse with the bridle and the ship with the small rudder guiding them. And then he compares the tongue to a fire. And surely it is. How many of us wish that we could take something back that we have said at one time or another? And James says it, meaning the tongue, stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. Every species is tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth, this is what doesn't make sense, from the same mouth come blessing and cursing. He says, my brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring forth pour forth from the same opening fresh and brackish water. Friends, on this 9-11 Sunday, September 12th, America does need to return to the Lord. We have strayed from Him and forgotten where our strength comes from. Our mouths get us in trouble. And I say that whether we be Republican, Democrat, or Independent. Hate speech. Hate. I don't like that word. Hate speech is so common, and people say and do the nastiest things to each other. 
On August 19th, we were rolling down I-95. You love that road, don't you? We were rolling down I-95, taking three vehicles, because everybody should take three vehicles to college, right? But Zach, in his vehicle, were you riding with him at the time? Joyce was in his car at the time. He had been riding in the left lane too long. And a car passed him on the right and threw a rock at his vehicle, hitting the windshield. It didn't crack the windshield. But why would a person do that? What would possess a person to throw a rock from one car to another. You have heard of Westboro Baptist Church in Topeka, Kansas. They are described as a hyper Calvinist hate group. I said Westboro Baptist Church. They have published hate speech against Jews, Muslims, transgender people, and numerous Christian denominations. They have been anti-gay since 1989 under the leadership of Reverend Fred Phelps. The church has led protests with placards saying God hates fags at military funerals and also signs saying thank God for dead soldiers. A spokesperson for Fred Phelps says, said, Barack Obama will definitely be going to hell, and he was most likely the beast spoken of in Revelation. This is a church saying these things. The tongue can be evil. This was a church I was talking about. A Christian body making these remarks. Whereas Christ said to make love our aim, Westboro Baptist Church is espousing hate. The book of James is saying, how can this be? In James 3.12 it says, can a fig tree yield olives? Karen just read it. Or a grapevine figs. How can our mouths give blessing and mercy at the same time? Isn't that hypocritical? People want this remembrance, patriotic weekend. I have to be in our I would leave it in the door, and I would ask them all to do that as well as a nation. Maybe we work with our mouths toward diplomacy and talking things out rather than making war. At the main gate at Fowler Lodge, it says on the brickwork a quote from Elihu Root. You say, who the heck Bruce was Elihu Root? He was the former Secretary of War under President McKinley around 1900 and Secretary of State under Teddy Roosevelt. And Elihu Root won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1912. The quote on that brick for War College says, not to promote war, but to preserve peace. Isn't that the purpose of a strong military, a strong defense? And isn't our purpose, this remembrance slash patriot weekend, to promote peace and not war? Isn't our purpose as Christians to promote love and not hate? As we repent this day, let us return to God and let us tame our tongues. May it be our prayer to do just that. 
May this be our prayer. Amen. I would, I've chosen a five-minute video by Marty Getz to use this morning, and I thank Diane for her help in preparing that for this morning. Called 20 Years After 9-11, We Will Never Forget. Thank you.
Messiah of pride on that day. Let us join together, shall we? Deb, if you could play it through once for us, Christ for the world we sing. And I uh, just want to make sure we know what we're saying. based on the number of tested. 
and that number is over 16.2 percent now okay in franklin county one of the highest counties in the state so we continue to pray about that and pray for people in our hospitals who are going through this for college students Elizabeth, it's good to see you in the sanctuary this morning. Just because Happy Valley was happy yesterday. All right. And Columbus, Ohio was not happy yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Okay, well, we continue to, to lift people up, like our college students, and our military people. Our health care workers. Are there others, others this morning for prayer? Go ahead. None? Go ahead, Deanna. So, Ryan Manili family, um, M E N E E L Y, um, from Forward Church. The Ryan Manili family, and, and what's going on there? Um, 14 year old boy. Okay, all right. Right. They lost their 14-year-old son. And, and the reason Deanna is bringing this one up um, is she had this 14-year-old. They used to attend Calvary United Methodist in Fayetteville, up on the hill there. And uh, Deanna had Ryan in Sunday school years ago. And, um, so the Ryan Manioli family. Another this morning. Uh, oh, you just have your hand up. Okay. Go ahead, Mike. My uh, godparents, Barbara and Paul Allcamp in Lancaster County, uh, Miss Paul Allcamp uh, was, was just not not right. And they took him, they found him with a lot of calcium in his blood, uh, which they're pretty sure is bone cancer. And he's going through treatments first to get the calcium flushed from his bloodstream, um, and then they can address the, the bone cancer. But uh, as I said, they were my godparents growing up. They were entrusted with me in good Christian family in Lancaster County. And okay. My thoughts and prayers are with them. Paul Allham. Yes, right? Okay. Others this morning. Thanks. Fernando's other eye, 
the things that we've added, but Lord, the ones that we've had on our list for weeks and months, we continue to lift them up. And Lord, we pray for our nation this morning as well. We make that plea. What do we pray for, Lord, for our nation? We pray for unity. That as we came together on that solemn day, September 11, 2001, that we would come together again. Bless our country, Lord. Make us strong again. Make us a peaceful people. So Lord, on these prayer requests that we give you, we ask you to hear our prayers and hear our praises as well. We give you thanks. We pray this this day in the name of the one who taught us to pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us bring our tithes and offerings now to the Lord.